تَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ حِلْيَةٌ تَلْبَسُونَهَا وَتَرَى الْفُلْكَ مَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ تَمِيدُ بِكُمْ وَأَنْهَارًا وَسُبُلًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ وَعَلَامَاتٍ وبالنجم هم يهتدون أفمن يخلق كمن لا يخلق أفلا تذكرون وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تحسوها إن الله لغفور رحيم والله يعلم ما تسرون وما تعلنون وَالَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَخْلُقُونَ شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يَخْلُقُونَ أَمْوَاتٌ غَيْرُ أَحْيَاءٍ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ إِلَٰهُكُمْ إِلَٰهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَالَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مُنْكِرَةٌ وَهُمْ مستكبرون لا جرم أن الله يعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون إنه لا يحب المستكبرين First of all we give our praise and our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us and we send salat and salam on his last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As we continue with the tafsir of Surah Al-Nahl We are on verse 12 We are looking at the reasons of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone should be worshipped Because in verse 2 we were told in this surah in Surah Al-Nahl that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends down the angels with revelation and the angels will go to the messengers <coughs> whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and they are commanded, each and every messenger, with no exception every single prophet were told by the angel and we know the angel in charge of revelation which is Jibra'il alayhi salam so Jibreel alayhi salam will go to all the prophets and he would command them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the command from Allah is that you warn your people that no one, there's no God besides Allah and that you should have taqwa. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from verse 3 onwards, Allah tells us why it is that he alone should be your God. Why it is that he alone 
is your Rabb. He alone should be worshipped and no one else should be worshipped besides Him. And from there onwards, from verse 3 onwards, we have seen different things Allah has shown to us that makes Him most deserving to be worshipped alone besides anyone else. One is He created the heavens. Second, He created the earth. He created insan. He created mankind. <clears throat> he created the an'am, the cattle. created the the camels, the sheep, the goats. And he told us in a few ayats well of the benefits we get from the an'am. So not only creating the cattle, but also giving us so many benefits for us to utilize these cattle. And then he went on to speak about al-khayl wal-bighal wal-hamir, which is horses, mules, and donkey. Also a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has subjected it as a form of you using it for transportation. And they would use these animals in order to, to ride, to transport their luggages, as well as, as Allah says, zina, as well as adornment. And then Allah tells us he also sends down the rain for us. The rain, another favor, another thing which Allah has given to us, which no one else gives us besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rain, and Allah says, from it you, as insan, as human being, you are able to drink from it. You are able to nourish yourself, quench your thirst with the water, the rain water. Even though there is so, so much of water in the sea, it is not drinkable. When the rain comes with that sweet water, Allah says, it is Allah who have sent that. And this is why Allah alone should be worshipped. He says, the water nourishes you as an insan, as a human being. It also nourishes your plants, your crops, as well as your cattle are able to go and feed, able to graze. And then Allah says He grows. Another thing is He grows crops for you. Olives, <coughs> dates, palms, grapes, and all, every single type of fruit you can think about. It is only Allah who does that for us. So these were some of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so far He has shown us. He has presented to us in order for us to acknowledge that only He alone should be worshipped. And now this ayat which we are going to start tonight, which is ayat number 12, Allah continues to present more reasons, more of His favors, more of His divine blessings that He has bestowed on us to prove to us that He alone should be worshipped. So this ayat, ayat number 12, Allah says, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ Allah says, He has subjected for you the night and the day and the sun and moon. وَالنُّجُومُ مُسَخَّرَاتٌ بِأَمْرِ And the stars are subjected by His command. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكَوْمٍ يَعْقِلُونَ Allah says, indeed in that are signs for people who reason. For someone yaqilun, someone who think. So here Allah tells us as his ibad, as his servants. Allah tells us again of his mighty favor by subjecting for us the night and the day. And the night of the day, yata'aqiban, they follow each other. Soon as the night comes to an end, the day will start. Soon as the day comes to an end, the night will start. And this is ongoing all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has subjected the, the night, He has made the night suitable for you to be able to sleep, for you to rest your body, for you to have some sort of comfort, for you to re-energize yourself. So he has made the surrounding, he has made the place dark, he has made it quiet, serene, for you to relax your body. And he has subjected the day now that the sun will come out and shine and it will be bright so that you could seek your provisions. Imagine if there was only day all the time. 
the place was always dark. It would have been very difficult for us if it was only daylight all the time and there's no night for us to rest again, it would have been difficult for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know it is He who is giving you the nights. It is He who is giving you the day. And then He says, وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرُ He has also subjected for you again the sun and the moon. And Allah keeps on letting us know that everything he has been doing is for you, not for him. Allah does not benefit from the night, Allah does not benefit from the day. Allah does not benefit from the sun or the moon. It is Allah who is giving you all these things, subjecting them, so that you as insan, as human being, could gain benefit from it. So that you could derive pleasure, comfort, have a, a ease whilst you are living with these things Allah has given. So He's washamsa wal qamar. Allah says, I've subjected for you the sun and the moon as well. <clears throat> and the sun and the moon, they revolve. The sun and the moon is used in order to calculate our time as well. We use these two entities, the sun and the moon, in order to count our years. Allah tells us, He says, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ ضِيَاءَ وَالْقَمَرَ نُورًا Allah says, He is the one who has made the sun so bright. وَالْقَمَرَ نُورًا And the moon with an amount of light, but not as bright as the sun. And then He says, وَقَدَّرَهُ مَنَازِلَ لِتَعْلَمُوا أَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ Allah says, and وَقَدَّرُهُ مَنَازِلَ Allah has decreed that the sun and the moon will be in stages. And these stages, لِتَعْلَمُوا أَذِرَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ So that you will know the amount of years you have lived. وَالْحِسَابِ You're able, you are able to do your reckoning. You're able to do your accounting. So if there were no sun, there were no moon. No sun, no moon. But Allah allows us to live without the sun and the moon then we wouldn't know how long we have lived for. Because there wouldn't be anything for us to calculate the years we are living. It is the sun and the moon that gives us this calculation. We know that with the sun, we have the solar calendar. What they, they use now, the Gregorian calendar, which is derived from using the sun. After 365 days, one year comes to an end. With the sun, you cannot calculate the months. You can only calculate the years using the sun. But with the moon, you're able to calculate each month. You look at the stages of the moon. When is the new moon? When is the full moon? And you're able to calculate how much months, how much years. So with the moon, you're able to calculate both the months as well as the years. Because after the 12 months, you, you will get a year. So Allah has given you this, the sun and the moon, so that you could derive some benefit from it. You could calculate your years, you can know how long, you could plan as well. You could plan to know what you, you intend to do. So Allah says, next one nujumu musakharatum bi amri. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the stars. Allah has also subjected the stars. One nujum musakharatum bi amri. The stars they are subjected by bi amri, by his command. They are subjected by the command of Allah. There are some stars which are fixed. There are some stars which are moving throughout the Samawat. The stars brings about a certain light as well that guide those who are lost. For example, those who are traveling by sea and they don't have any kind of calculation, any kind of direction. They would use the stars in order to know where, which direction to go to. So Allah has given us the stars so that it could be a, a form of guide for those who are in darkness. And each of these things, the sun, 
the moon, the stars, all of them, they travel in its, they travel in their orbits. And they continue to do that by the will of Allah. They don't do it by their own. Right now you see them, you, when you <coughs> absorb, you see that they are moving. But they are doing that by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the kudrat, by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they move in such a manner which has been decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yaziru alayha, they cannot increase on that. They cannot move faster than how Allah has decreed them to, to move. Wala yankus minha, they cannot decrease their movement. So how Allah wants them to move, they have to move in that exact speed. They cannot decrease that movement. Because if they were to increase a little bit, or decrease a little bit, it is going to cause havoc. It is going to cause chaos in the heavens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these things, the sun, the moon, and the stars revolving how He wants them to. And they continue to do that, and they are going to continue until the Day of Judgment. Allah is going to use these things, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and He is going to make them collide with one another, which will cause the Day of Judgment. So when the, the hour comes, and only Allah knows when the hour will arrive, we have no doubt that the hour will come, but as for the specific time of when the hour will come, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. But as Allah says, Ida samaun shaqqat, Ida shamsu kuwirat, when the sun is going to fall up, Ida al kawakibun tafarat, so all these things, the sun and the moon, these are the things that Allah is going to use to collide with one another and then the day of judgment is going to come into existence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed these things for our benefit. And each one of them are under Allah's control, under Allah's authority, under Allah's decree, as Allah tells us in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna rabbakum Allahu alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-ard fi sittati ayya. Allah tells us in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 54, Allah says, Certainly, Ya Rabb Allah, Certainly, Ya Rabb Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth fi sittati ayya, in six days. And then he said, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْأَرْشِ And then Allah, He rose on His arsh, on His throne. يُكْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارِ Allah says, the night covers the day. يُكْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارِ يَطْلُبُهُ حَثِيثًا And it seeks it rapidly. The night covers the day and it seeks it rapidly. When Maghrib time comes in. Sometimes you watch out and you see it's dark. So, sorry, it is bright. And by the time you pray, that tree rakats and you watch outside back. Already become dark. The time just goes by. The, the, the night <coughs> hurries to come in, to take away, to cover the day. And similarly, when you look in the morning time, at the break of dawn and uh, the time between the break of dawn and the rising of the sun, the time is very, very short. By the time you know it, you see the place starts to get bright. So Allah says, the night is just waiting for a time to reach there. So as soon as his time comes, he is there, no, no delay at all. He is there ready to make his entrance. And when the night, when the day in the morning <coughs> ready to come in, it comes very quickly as well. We're just waiting for the night to end so that the daylight could step in. So Allah says, Yet hafitha. And then He says, Washamsa wal qamara wal nujum musakharatum mi amri. Allah says, The sun, the moon, and the stars are all subjected by His command. 
all of these things are subjected by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah lahu al wal amr for Allah belongs all creation. For Allah belongs all amr, all commands. Tabarakallahu rabbal alameen. Allah is blessed who is Lord of the worlds. So this is in verse 54 of Surah Al-A'raf. And then Allah says, Inna fi thalika la ayatin li yaqilun. Allah says, certainly in that are signs for people who understand, who think. <clears throat> looking at the, the night, looking at the day, the sun, the moon, the stars. Allah says, if you were to just think, definitely you will see that these things are signs to prove the existence of Allah as well as to prove the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is the end of verse 12. If you go back to verse 11, when Allah was speaking about the crops and the dead palms and the fruit trees, in verse 11, when Allah ends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna fi dhalika la ayat li yatafakkarun. Allah says, certainly in that are signs for people who yatafakkarun, those who ponder, those who think deeply. So when it comes to the crops, Allah says, you need to think very deeply. You need to have deep thoughts when you're contemplating about the crops. And as long as you contemplate and you ponder well over the trees that are growing, Allah says, then it will be an ayat, it will be a sign for you. But now in verse 12, Allah did not say, Inna fi la ayat li yatafakkarun. Allah says, Inna fi la ayat li yaqilun. Not yatafakkarun now. Now is yaqilun. So one is yatafakkarun, yatafakkarun, which means to think deeply. To think deeply, to ponder, to contemplate. But yaqilun means just to think. Only to think. You don't have to ponder deeply. So for crops and things, he says, ponder deeply. But now he has given you something that you don't even have to ponder deeply over, which is the night, the day, the sun, the moon, the stars. He says, you don't even really have to go into deep thinking. You just have to use your aql, your aqilun come from one aql, which is your intelligence, just to think. You don't even have to watch at it and you can say, yes, this is really the, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has lowered the standard now. So from thinking deeply, Allah says, with these now, with the night, the day, the sun, the moon, the stars, all you have to do is just think. Don't go in no deep thought. Just think and then it will going to be an ayat for you. The next ayat, which is verse 13, Allah says, Allah says, وَمَا ذَرَعَ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُخْتَلِفًا أَلْوَانُهُ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِكَوْمٍ يَذَّكَّرُونَ Allah says, and he has subjected whatever he multiplied for you on the earth of varying colors. Indeed, in that is a sign for people who remember. So here now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us of the different things he has created for us. So on earth, there are many other things that he did not mention. So Allah says, وَمَا ذَرَ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Whatever, any other things that are there on earth, those things with Allah, he has not mentioned. But they are there on earth. Anything that you see on earth, it is part of Allah's creation. Imagine if Allah was to, to mention every single thing on earth. This book would have been never ended. So Allah mentions a few and then He says just to conclude, just to put all together. Similarly with the fruits, He said <coughs> Zaitun, He said Olive, He said Nakhil, 
which is dates, he says a'anab, which is grapes, and then he says wa min kulli thamarat, every other fruit. He only mentions three, and then he says every other fruit you could think about. There are so many fruits that Allah is not going to <coughs> Allah is not going to waste any time by just mentioning fruits upon fruits upon fruits. And similarly, Allah has told us so many things that He has created on earth. So now after mentioning a few things, Allah says, وَمَا ذَرَعَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And whatever Allah has created for you on the earth. مُخْتَلِفَ الْأَلْوَانُ They are different in color. Many things, they might be different in shape, they might be different in color. <coughs> And as for things we eat, they might be different in taste. So Allah says, everything that Allah has created for you, which is different in color. Some of those, <coughs> for example, different animals, not just those animals that were mentioned, but all other type of animals, minerals, different types of plants, inanimate things which we have on earth, for example, iron and whatever else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created which are inanimate. All of that is part of Allah's creation. And then Allah says, Inna fi dhalika la ayatan li qawmi yadhakkaroon. Allah says, certainly in that uh, uh, ayat, certainly in these things is a sign for the people who reflect, who remember. So look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves down. From verse 11, he says, يَتَفَكَّرُونَ He says, the ayats, these things which we have mentioned, the crops, they are signs for people who ponder deeply. And then as for the night, day, the sun and the moon, he says, these are signs for people who only think. They only have to think. And now Allah even lowers it more. Allah says, Inna fi dhalika la ayata li qawmi yaddakkaroon. Allah says, so, certainly these are signs for people who just remember. Who just remember. Who just, just have a little thought of it. <coughs> Allah says, yaddakkaroon. And he did not say yatadhakkarun. There are many other places in the Quran where Allah will say, will say yatadhakkarun. Both means to remember, both means to think. But yatadhakkarun is when you put some effort in thinking. Here, when Allah says yatadhakkarun, Allah is telling you, you don't even have to put no effort. You don't have to put no effort at all. Just try to remember about the things Allah has created for you and you will have signs, you will have dalils, you will have hujaj, you will have proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness right in front of you. So with this we, we end verse 13. Those on the Zoom, I would like you to leave the meeting and you can come on back with the same link inshallah.
So we move on now to verse number 14. So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the heavens, He spoke about the earth. Now Allah is going to inform us of His blessings and His favors He has bestowed on us with regards to the ocean and the sea. So you have seen already about the heavens, the night, the day, the sun, the moon. You have saw about the animals Allah has created, about the land, the earth. Now Allah has taken us on a journey in the sea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, هُوَ الَّذِي سَخَّرَ الْبَحْرَ لِتَأْكُلُوا مِنْهُ لَحْمًا طَرِيَّةً وَتَسْتَخْرِجُوا مِنْهُ حِلْيَةً تَلْبَسُونَهَا وَتَرَى الْفُلْكَ مَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah says, And it is He who subjected the sea for you to eat from its tender meat and to extract from it ornaments which you wear. And you see the ships plowing through it, and he subjected it that you may seek of his bounty, and perhaps you will be grateful. So here Allah tells us about al-Bahra. He is the one who has subjected the sea. He has subjected the sea. <coughs> لِتَأْكُلُوا مِنْهُمْ So that you could eat. I want us, one of it is, first of all, he had subjected the sea so that you could be in the sea. You could travel in the sea. You could move around in the sea. And Allah says, He has placed provisions. He has placed sustenance for you in the sea. So, لِتَأْكُلُوا مِنْهُ So that you may eat from it لَحْمًا تَرِيَّةً لَحْمًا تَرِيَّةً Which is translated as tender meat Fresh meat Meat that is not hard to cook Meat that is not hard to be able to eat from it Whilst there is so much of other things You have a lot of preparation in order to prepare them Fish is one of the things that is very, very easy for you to eat from it. So Allah has placed these fish. minhu lahman tariya. He has placed it for us and He has made the fish halal for us. Be it if the fish is dead or if the fish is alive, which is the only type of animals allowed to eat even if we were to get them dead which most of us when we buy fish it is already dead there's no need of halal in fish but as all other animals you have to halal them and you can't go and eat them if they're dead unless they were sacrificed by Reciting Bismillah Akbar over them. But as for fish, there's no need to recite anything. Allah has made them halal for you in the sea. So Allah is telling you. And there's no difference of opinion about fish being halal or haram. Every single scholar of the opinion that all fishes are halal to eat. Every single fish that is in the sea is halal to eat. We know there is a difference of opinion regarding things which are not considered as fish. So for example, you have shrimp, you have crab, you have many other things <coughs> that are not considered as fish. Now there is difference of opinion and we dealt into we went into that in Surah Al-Ma'idah when we did the tafsir of the ayat وَحِلِّ لَكُمْ صَيْدَ الْبَحْرِ وَتَعَامَهُ and Allah says it is halal for you to hunt in the sea and it's food right? we looked at Imam Abu Hanifa's position there on the, that ayat which we, de which we did so we will not be going into these masalas again 
as for about shrimp and crab. But we are looking at the, the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that He has made fishes. He has made the meat halal for you to eat. And not only do you get provisions from the sea, he says, وَتَسْتَخْرِجُوا مِنْهُ حِلْيَةً تَلْبَسُونَهَا And you are able to extract from it hilya, ornaments, jewelry from the sea that you normally wear, which is for our sisters, the females. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed pearls, corals, different things in the sea that it is easy for us to take out, to extract. And when it comes out, they would use it as necklaces, use it as a form of decorating and beautifying themselves. So Allah says, So one, Allah has subjected the sea so that you get food. And the food of the sea is very beneficial. Many people will say that it is even more beneficial than some of the, the food on land. So Allah has given you food in the sea as well as Allah has given you ornaments. Allah has given you jewelry from the sea. And then Allah says, وَتَرَ الْفُلْقَ وَتَرَ الْفُلْقَ مَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ Allah says, and you will see the fulk. Allah says, you will see the ship مَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ plowing through it. You will see the ships. When you look at the ship, you see the waves and the ship is just cutting through those waves, plowing through, going. Allah says, it is Allah who has done that. There are many ships that have sank in the past. <clears throat> it is only by the subjection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is just by Allah's will, Allah is allowing these ships to move across the sea. Or as Allah could have caused the waves to be so harsh that it would have toppled the ship over and caused it to drown. But as Allah who keeps it on the sea, allowing it to move from one place to the next. And it is mentioned that the first person to build a ship was Prophet Noah alayhi salam. Before Noah alayhi salam, there were no ships. Noah alayhi salam was the first person to build the first ship. And it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had sent Jibreel alayhi salam to instruct him how to build the ship how to build the ark. <clears throat> so that was the foreship. And from there onwards, people started to follow the footstep of Nuh salam, And they continued to build ships from generation after generation. And these ships are able to move from one place to the next. Very, very far distances. Places that you, you cannot go without Especially in those days amongst the, the companions, there were no airplane. So in order to reach certain places, you have to travel by sea. Without traveling by sea, you could never reach to that area. Because there was nothing to go above, so you had to go through the oceans and the sea in order to reach another place. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah has given you the ship. And you see Allah has subjected the sea so that the ships are allowed to move through the, the, the sea. And then Allah says, وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ So that you will benefit, so that you will seek from His favors. The reason He allowed you to build these ships, allowed the ocean to have these ships sail on the ocean or on the sea. Allah says, so that you, again you, لِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ So that you will seek from His favors. And this is, this is what we do when we travel from one place to the next. We're seeking Allah's favors. 
when you go from one place to the next is because you need something from that place, from that next area. Many times they, they would use it as a form. In those days, one is migrating. If you want to migrate from one place to the next, you use the ship to go from one place to the next. You have a business, you want to move goods from one place to the next, you board a ship. And you're able to take your goods, so you are seeking Allah's favors through the ship by being able to move across. And even though there's air plane now and there's air cargo, using ships are still more cheaper than to use the airplane. When you look at the cost for delivery and for for services, even though the ships will take longer to arrive and you'll get your, your products. <clears throat> in a longer period of time, you'll have to wait in order to get your products. It will still come up a lot cheaper than if you were to ship that same thing with an airplane. So even though we have invented other things, the airplane is there, but it is not as economical as the ship. It is faster, but not cheaper. So ships are still more cheaper. So we still, all the big businessmen, they use ship with their cargoes to bring in things. Because if you try to do that with an airplane, you, you can't make any profit. So up to today, be it whatever new inventions, we still go back to well, folk, as Allah says, and the ship that Allah has given to you, what are al fulka mawakhira fihi, and you see the ship, mawakhira fihi, <coughs> plowing, plowing through the waves, walitabtagu min fadlihi, walitabtagu min fadlihi, so that you may seek his favors, so then Allah says, wala allakum tashkurun, Allah says, perhaps you will be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wala allakum tashkurun, Perhaps you may thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. The next ayat, which is ayat number 15, Allah says, Wa alqa fil awdi rawasiya antamida bikum wa anhara wa subula la alla kum tahtadun. Now Allah tells us about the mountains. Boy. He says, And he has cast into the earth formerly set mountains. Least it shift with you and made rivers and roads that you may be guided. So here Allah says, Wa al qafil awdi rawasiya. The word rawasiya is used and not jibal. Rawasiya is used instead of jibal. Jibal is translated as well as mountain, but rawasiya refers to very huge mountains. So Allah says, It is he who was cast into the earth. These huge mountains, and to me they become. And the reason of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to place these mountains in the earth or on the earth is so that the earth becomes stable and it does not shake. When the earth shake, nothing could remain on it. When we have, we have seen earthquakes at different countries. And with these little shaking, buildings crumble, roads are damaged. Everything that you have on it is destroyed. So imagine without the Jibal, without the Rawasi, without these huge mountains that Allah has used as pillars in order to keep it balanced. If there were no mountains, then no one of us would have been able to survive on earth. The word tamira means to swing or to sway from one side to the next because there's no balance. Allah says, if there were no mountains, that is how the earth would have been. It would have been moving one side to the next. Not the small little earthquake that you have, but big movements shaking from one side to the next. But Allah says, it is Allah, wa alqa. Allah is the one that have placed these rawasi. And what you see of the mountains, 
a lot more of that is in the earth. Allah has used it as pegs. So a lot more of that is inside the earth, keeping the earth stable. It is mentioned from Hassan. <coughs> he says, Lama Kulikatil Ard, when the earth was created, Kanat Tamida. The earth was created, there were no mountains on it. So as the earth was there, it was shaken, moving one side to the next, unstable. And the angels, the angels were there seeing this place that Allah has created, this earth, and it is moving, shaken. And they say, Ma hadi mukarrati ala They say no nothing will be able to survive on this. Nothing will be able to use the earth as a home because of how it is moving. And then wa And then when the morning came, the angels they saw the mountains. Allah had created the mountains. And with the mountains, they did not know when or how the mountains was there. But just when Fa'asbahu, when the morning came, the mountains, Allah created the mountains. As Allah says, Kun fayakun, be. And it happens. It doesn't have to take two, three weeks to build something. So as they wake up, they saw the mountains were there. Falam tadril malaika mimma khulikat. The angels did not know where or when the, the, the mountains were created. But then the earth became stable. And as the earth became stable, mankind was able to use the earth and inhabit the earth. And Allah says, وَأَنْحَارًا وَصُبْلًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَرُونَ Allah says, He has also placed rivers and pathways. He has made rivers and pathways. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَرُونَ Perhaps you will be guided. So Allah has made the rivers. So we have the sea have the mountains and even on land Allah has parted certain parts of the land in order to place anhar, in order to place rivers and with the rivers we use it again in order to reach from one place to the next so we have the rivers as well as we have subulan, subulan we refer to roads Allah says, we have parted it in such a way that you also have roads and pathways that you're able to traverse from one place to the next. Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ Perhaps you may be guided. So that you will be guided to whichever direction you're headed towards. <coughs> so with this, inshallah, we have completed verse 15. We will continue in our next session, starting with verse 16 inshallah in our next session subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wassalamu ala al mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum